worship you. Lord, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, just celebrate him. Just give him the thanks of your heart. He is worthy. He is worthy. We've set aside this time today. We've set aside this time today. That you would that have your you way. Would come and have your we way. open up our hearts. Our hearts are open, are open wide. wide. That you would have your to way. The glory. The glory. We've set aside. We've set aside this time. That you would come, that, that you would come and, and have your way. Our hearts are open Our wide, yeah. To see the glory of our God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. That is worthy of a king. That is worthy of the Lord. That is worthy of the King of all glory. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We give you glory. And we continue to declare, Lord God Almighty, that there is nothing that is hard for you to do. There is nothing that is impossible in your care, in your hands. You are a God of all impossibilities. You turn them around, oh God Almighty. Oh, yeah. We went we mungu was tahili. Oh, 
utukufu Umefanya mengi ya ajabu when in front me Mwambie kuna gumu kwake Hakuna gumu kwako Yesu Hakuna gumu kwako Hakuna gumu kwako Hakuna gumu kwako Yesu Hakuna gumu kwako Mara nyingine hakuna gumu kwako Wafanya njia Wafanya njia Pasipo Na njia Hakuna gumu kwa Na wakonjwa wanapona Na wakonjwa wanapona Wanapona Kwa jina lako Kwa jina lako Hakuna, hakuna, hakuna Chambo gumu kwa Mashtaka yetu ya me Vita vietu ni tu ya buwana Vita vietu ni tu ya buwana Fame zita inuka Na zita anguka Ila ufame wako Fame zita inuka Fame wako Hila, hila Yesu Hakuna Hakuna gumu kwako Hakuna Hakuna gumu kwako with you Lord Sha tunamwambia milima ya yeyuka Milima ya yeyuka kama nta mbele zako Wanguruma kama radi e Bwana Eh Wanguruma kama radi we Mwenye ngu Ulimba pa 
pasipo we kumbwa Uli umba pasipo we kumbwa Wewe mfame, wewe mfame Mili mayaye yuka Yanaye yuka The man like rocks Before the presence of the king of glory Unanguruma kamaradi Kamaradi Kweni mungu Kweni mungu Kwenye nkubu Uli umba pasipo kumbwa we Time, Akuna Gumu Quaco, Akuna Gumu Quaco, Akuna Gumu Quaco, Akuna Gumu Quaco, Yes, Lord, you are a God who knows his own, you are a God who has it all. You are a God who works it all. You are a God who is above all. We worship you. We worship your name. We bless you. We glorify you. You are immortal. You are invisible. You are the only wise God. Wisdom is who you are. In all your ways, wise. We glorify your name. Immortal. Immortal. Invisible God, only wise in light, inaccessible, from our most glorious, yes, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we pray. Yes, the 
you, Lord. Amen. We will praise your name. We will praise your name. And we'll exalt you. We lift you high, Jehovah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because you are faithful. You are merciful, Lord. You are kind. We lift you high. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, great Father of light. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Praise he alone is Lord of Lords. For his mercy endures forever. Rejoice, he has bought us by his blood. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say. Mercy. And his mercy endures forever. Come on now, give him a dance. <laughs> give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Sing praise, he alone is Lord of Lords. For his mercy endures forever. Rejoice. He has bought us by his blood. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. For his mercy endures. Yeah, he is good, for, for the Lord, Lord is good. good. And his mercy, and his mercy, endures mercy forever. for the Lord, for, for the, the Lord, Lord is good. good. And his mercy, and his mercy endures forever. forever. For the Lord, for the Lord is good, and His mercy, and His mercy endures forever. For the Lord, for the Lord is good, and His mercy, and His mercy endures forever. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on! Celebrate His goodness and His mercy. Yeah. Fadil is a kebonan is a milele. Fadil is a kebonan is a milele. Milele, 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 na milele. Milele, 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 na milele. Fadil is a kebonan is a milele. Fadil is a kebonan is a milele. Milele, 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 na milele. Milele, 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 na milele. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Fadili, 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 fadili. Sing fadili, yeah. Fadili zake, fadili zake, fadili zake, zake. Fadili, zake, zake, zake. Mungu, Mungu, you win my Fadili. Mungu, Mungu, you win my Fadili. Mungu, you win my Mungu, you win my Fadili. For the Lord, for the Lord is good. And it must be a joy. We praise your holy name. Your masses endure forever. Every new dawning day brings a new mercy with it. 
God Almighty, they never expire. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for you are merciful, God. Good and gracious, Lord, you are. We worship your name. We bless you, Rock of Ages. We thank you, King of all glory. We thank you, Almighty Father, because you are the only God Almighty who loved us. And while we were sinners, your love came through for us. And so we want to love you back. We want to give you our love. Lord Almighty, we want to declare your love and our love for you, O Jehovah God. We declare, O Jehovah God Almighty, that we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. For the price you paid for us at Calvary, we love you. We love you for the sacrifice you made, O God Almighty, with the blood. We love you, Lord. We love you. We will serve no other God but you. We will serve no other God but you. You are our God. Oh. And we give you glory. We give you glory we give you glory oh lord join me saying we give you glory we give you glory we give you glory We give you glory. We give you glory. Oh Lord. We give you glory. No foreign God. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place.
I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by your grace and mercy. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by your grace and mercy. I'm I am surrounded, Lord. Surrounded, I'm surrounded, yeah, I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded, yes, by your grace. As a banner lifted on high, in the name of Jesus, Yahweh will lift you high in this worship service. Our Lord will lift you high in this service. We lift you high, Jehovah Father. Will you just lift the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? For when his name is lifted in worship, he descends and resides with us. Would you just worship him as you lift his name on high, above every other name, above every other word, his word be lifted on high. Above every other thought, may his name be lifted in this sanctuary today. Above every other name, the name of Yahweh is lifted on high. Oh, Father, we lift you. We lift you as we worship you, our Father. Yahweh, there is none like you. There is none like you, our Father, our God, our Lord. None like you, our King. None like you, Jehovah El Shaddai. None compares with you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are our banner, you are our hope. You are our strength, you are our refuge. You are everything, our Father. 
incomparable God, great and awesome Father. Let your name be lifted above every situation in this sanctuary today, O oh God. Let your name be lifted above every thought of man. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, we call on that name, our Father, and we call on you, O oh wonderful Counselor. We call on you, gracious Lord, we call on you, our Father. We know whom we believe in, our God. And we come to you, O God, in confidence, our Father. For we understand, we know that you hear us, O God. And we present ourselves to you, our Father. O God Almighty, that may we be the living sacrifices, our Father. Holy and acceptable before you, Jehovah, Father. That Lord God Almighty, this is the acceptable worship, O oh God. We pray, Jehovah Father, that Lord, you'll saturate us in your presence, with your presence, our Father. Take hold of us, our God. Take hold of everything in us, our Father. And Lord God, let it be subject to you, our Father. We surrender everything to you, O oh God Almighty. We surrender everything to you this hour just to worship you, O oh God. Just to encounter you, our Father. Lord, will you descend and speak to us in our various situations? In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, we lift you on high, Jehovah. We lift you on high, King of all glory. We lift you on high, our Lord, our God, and our Father. We lift you on high, Jehovah, above our joblessness, above our distress, above our situations, O oh God. We choose to see you lifted on high, O oh God Almighty. We choose to see you exalted, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us. Oh God, we know that you identify with our weaknesses. You identify with our issues. You identify with our inadequacy. We come just as we are to you, Jehovah Father. In worship, Jehovah God. In adoration, Jehovah Father. Oh, in praises before you, our Father. None compares with you. We declare with our lips, our Father. We declare with our mouths, oh God Almighty. That is indeed there is no God like you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh Son of God, we bow before you. Holy One of Israel, we bow before you. Gracious One, we bow before you. Lord of Lords, we bow before you. And we surrender everything to you, our Father. You are a great God. You are an awesome Father. You are a wonderful God. Hear our prayer this morning, O oh God. Hear our prayer, Jehovah Father. Wipe our tears, Jesus. Encourage our hearts, O oh God. Lift us again, our Father. We are before you, Jehovah God. We know we are before a Father, our Father. Would you hear us, O oh God? Would you lift us, O oh God? Will you remember our land, Jehovah Father? Will you remember our boundaries, our God? Will you remember the people of the nation of Kenya, Jehovah? Will you remember the inhabitants of this land, Jehovah God? Will you remember our leadership, Jehovah Father? Will you speak to us, O oh God, as a people, as a nation, our Father? Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, our Father. We ask you, Jesus, that in this land of Kenya, that you'll have your way. That you'll have your way, O oh God. You are able to touch the heart of the kings, our Father. And we commit our leadership of this nation, political leadership, to you. We pray, Jehovah Father, that would it please you, our God, to speak to them? Would it please you to direct their hearts? Would it please you to give them some wisdom? In this season, our Father, would it please you, Jehovah God, to give us a solution, our Father? We ask for your hand, O oh God. We ask for your guidance, our Father. The Lord God, you'll secure our boundaries. We pray for every community in this land of Kenya. O oh God Almighty, Will you rebuke the devourer, our Father? In the name of Jesus, O oh God, that a brother will not rise against a brother, that a sister will not rise against a sister, 
that, Lord, you'll secure the over further the boundaries of this earth. We lift Kenya to you. And as we lift ourselves to you, Lord, we subject ourselves to your authority. And we ask that you may lead us for the glory and for the honor of your name. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Will you celebrate Jesus? Amen. He's a good God. And that song reminded us that as we lift him, he indwells our praises and our worship and is here with us to answer our prayer, to minister to us, and even to, you know, unstack us if there's such a thing in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you as you have your seats and you can celebrate him again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please also help me appreciate the music team here. Amen. Not long ago, they educated me that it is called music team, not choir. Because not worship team, because all of us are worshipers. But not all of us <laughs> can sing the way they sing. The Lord be praised. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Amen and amen. Let me see um, before we proceed who is in the house today. You're visiting with us for the very first time. You are special guest to us. Can I see you by a show of hands? If you're there, thank you, thank you. Please stand and keep standing until I'll ask you to sit. Just keep standing, keep standing. Yes, some more first time visitors. Amen, amen. Just keep standing, keep standing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. In this church, we love visitors. So thank you for honoring our imagined invitation. But thank you for finding time just to come and worship with us here in Seaton Valley Road. Um, we love guests and we love visitors. So what we'll ask you to do, that uh, at the end of this service, please do not be in a hurry to leave. We have prepared something for you. We want to fellowship with you. So we'll ask for about 10 minutes or five, or yeah, 10 there about of your time. And uh, how to do that is uh, as we exit at the end of this service, if you look around, there are some ladies and some gentlemen in blue jackets. You can walk to any of them and they'll usher you to the appropriate place. But if you don't see any of them, the door to my extreme right, you'll actually find somebody dressed the same way waiting for you so that we may fellowship together. But uh, perhaps uh, if you came and worshipped with us today and after this service, you'll be going back to your local assembly. We want to send you with our love and our greetings. And uh, after, um, or, or just in case, in case you are looking for a church, we have some good news for you. And the good news is the search has come to an end. Yes, your search for a church came to an end the moment you came to this sanctuary. So please feel at home and stay blessed. In Jesus' name. Have your seat. Thank you for worshiping with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. On such occasions, uh, every third uh, um, Sunday, we gather here to celebrate the gift that God has given us unto us in terms of babies. And God has blessed us with a number of them. And uh, we are blessed to have them join with us today. Scripture would say um, in the book of uh, Psalms 127 that children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is, a re is his reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. So I would want to invite the men and the women who have their quiver full of them to bring these beloved children to the altar. Or the children, you can also bring your parents. Jason Kipchumba Chiriot, if your parents are here, please come. And uh, Atara Chepkemoi, Fena Kemuma, Joy Imani, Sarah Gift Kinywa, hallelujah, Mary Nyambura, Adia, Natasha, 
Leroy Mitch Atieno, Lorin Dina, Tinasha Jepchumba, Genius Olo, <laughs> Hallelujah, <laughs> Darius Odiambo, Taraji Happiness, Graham Mushiri, Ted Kiumo, Tamara Karunda, Klo Wanjiro Kihika, Jabali Wanjui, Angel Emma, El Nathan Faraji, Matteo Ataya, Manuel Adaya, Kelaya Wanjala, Derek Jabari, and Wendy Ayeko. I'll share with you the list of these names so that you can also consider when you're choosing names. This service here that we are having today is a proclamation by the parents that God is the giver of life and children are a gift from God. It's a presentation of these children to God. This service does not save. It does not remove the Adamic sin. It is not baptism that we are doing today. We are dedicating them unto the Lord as we see in the scripture so that when they are of age, they'll make a personal decision to follow the Lord. This is a prayer of God's blessing and protection to these children. And also a promise on the part of the parents that they will raise these children in the ways of the Lord. So parents, having gone through this class, and having been prepared for this ministry, I'll give you this charge. And if you agree with me, you'll answer by saying, yes, we do. Do you, as parents of this child, wish to dedicate him or her to the Lord? Do you promise to bring up this child in the fear, in the instruction of the Lord, so that by the reason of your life, your child will commit his or her life to God as, at an early age. If that is your commitment, let's pray. And as we do that prayer, would I ask the pastors just and the elders just to join just before them in the name of Jesus and stand with these children, with this parent as they make this commitment today. Will you open up your mouth and just bless these children? The congregation, you can also pray for them in the name of Jesus. You stretch your hands to them and just pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we bless you. Oh, Lord, we honor you. Oh, Lord, we exalt you. Today we come, our Father, bringing the fruit, oh God, of our home to you, our Father bringing these children to you, our Father. From every one of them, our Father, we are grateful people, God. We bring them as parents that you've entrusted with these children, our Father. We show to you our inadequacy in raising them, our Father. And therefore, we are seeking your counsel and your wisdom, O God. Your grace, your knowledge, and your anointing, our Father. For we know they are gifts that have come from you, O God. And we bring them back to you, our Father. Now, Lord, we may take the space of custodians, our Father, of this great gift that you've given us, O oh God. And therefore, we come to you, our Father. Lord, with broken hearts, our Father, bringing these children in our hands to you, O oh God. And we ask you, everlasting Father, that you'll help every parent here, O oh God. That, Lord, you'll help every child here, Jehovah, Father. Grow, Jehovah, as you so desire, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, the Lord, you will protect them every day of their lives, our Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, you'll journey with them, O God. You'll walk with them, our Father. You will guide these children, O God. 
you'll walk with these children, our oh, Father, from the early age, oh God. You'll teach them your precepts, our God. You'll teach them your laws, your instructions, our Father. That, Lord, when they grow up, they will not deviate from it, our Father. That they will know you, oh God. We separate these children, oh God. From the patterns of the world, our Father, as we plug them in, O oh God, to your heavenly pattern, Jehovah God, that, Father, they will walk under your obedience, O oh God, they will walk under your instruction, our Father, and they will follow you, Jehovah God, all the days of their lives, O oh God. Will you take care of them, our Father? And will you bless them, O oh God? Bless them with long life. Bless them with good health. In the name of Jesus, we commit them to you, our Father. Knowing, Jehovah God, that they are your children, our Father. And will you therefore care for them, O oh God? We bless you. And we honor you, holy God. For there is none like you. We give these children, we dedicate them to you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. Will you celebrate Jesus Christ? Amen, amen. Parents, uh, after this service, Pastor Ruth has a very special gift for you. The very first gift, a dedication gift to your children. Please don't leave. You can sit, and after the service, you'll just come and pick them in the name of Jesus, just right here in this altar. Amen. Celebrate this parent. Amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you. Thank you, parents. When you get more, bring them back. Amen. May the Lord bless you with more. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ruth has said amen, and I've singled that amen out. Amen. Amen. Just before we continue with our meeting today, there are two categories of people that we'll just appreciate as we, as we get ready to worship the Lord with our offering. By the way, if you do not know, we are live on Hope TV. Yes, Hope Media is here with us, so we are all over the world. So behave yeah, when the camera comes around you. Can. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Hope Media, just for facilitating our meeting today. And uh, they will be part of us every now and then. So uh, if you miss this, go and tune in in the name of Jesus Christ. You can have your own second service at home by watching the first one and watching your smiles. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, our ushers, will you please prepare to wait on us? Would you prepare to wait on us? So was our media team is also preparing some notices for us. And uh, uh, we will pray then the ushers will facilitate us in uh, that manner. Amen. Shall we pray for the Lord's tithes and offerings? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you with our substances. We ask that you receive it for the fatherings of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sunday and many thanks for worshipping with us today, the 16th of July, 2023. We are grateful for your continued support in ministries here in Sitam Valley Road. Should you want to worship through giving, please use the offering bags near you. You can also give through M-Pesa pay bill number 933. 939 indicate whether it is a tithe or an offering in the account segment. Checks can be drawn in favor of Christ is the Answer Ministries. You can also visit our office reception to swipe your card at the end of this service. God bless you as you give. Thank you. Family Care Ministry invites couples who would like to join Married Couples Care Groups, MCCG, to a group formation meeting on Sunday the 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. All interested couples are requested to register at the reception after this service. We thank God for another opportunity to minister to the children through DVBS. This year's DVBS will run from the 14th to the 18th of August 2023. Parents and guardians are requested to note these key dates for their planning purposes. The ministry requests volunteers to serve in various areas during the DVBS week. Please register at the registration desk and online via the Google form circulating at the various online platforms. 
The men's ministry, Men at Work, is inviting all men aged 18 and above to the monthly meeting dubbed The Garage, a time to intimately seek the higher power for transformation and impact on Friday the 21st of July, starting 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Be sure to attend. Are you going through some challenges in life like sicknesses and bereavement? Or are you celebrating something and would want to experience fellowship, care and family at a personal level, the pastoral, the leadership and the safari groups in your neighborhood will be glad to be part of the journey. Get in touch with us and let us know. Our offices are also open for ministry and prayers from Tuesday to Friday every week. CITAM Joint Singles Ministry invites all singles aged 30 years and above to the Northern Regional Annual Joint Event on Saturday the 29th of July 2023 at Camp Lunda Embu, time 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Theme, Refreshed in His Presence, Acts 319. Cost 1,850 shillings per person. Registration deadline Sunday the 16th of July. Payment deadline Sunday the 23rd of July. For more information, contact Sam Mwangi on 0721 106 887 or your respective assembly representative. New Hope Ministry, in conjunction with Holy Communion and Challenges Ministries, invites you to a mental health awareness talk on the 29th of July 2023 at McBride Hall from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Topics will include basic understanding of mental health, loss and grief in relation to mental health, childhood mental challenges, how children grieve and how to support them, among others. Registration is free through a link available on social media and at the registration desk after this service. All are welcome. The Young Professionals Fellowship would like to invite all the young people between the age of 25 and 35 to our annual inter-assembly Young Professionals Prayer and Fasting Retreat which will be held at Heaven's Gate Prayer Mountain, Nakuru from the 21st of July to the 23rd of July 2023. The registration charges are 400 shillings only. For registration and further inquiries, kindly visit the church information desk after the service. See you there as we seek to draw closer to God. Are you looking for more care, fellowship, an opportunity to study God's Word consistently and a loving Christian community to walk with you in the ups and downs of your Christian life? If yes to any of these, please sign up at the Safari Desk today and join a neighborhood safari group team in your area where you will meet an exciting team of Christian believers who meet once a week to study the Word of God, pray with you, fellowship with you, care for you, and much more. The bands of marriage are announced between Robert Alai Onyango and Antonina Beverly Madowo, who intend to wed on the 29th of July 2023, 10 a.m. at Sitam Valley Road. We also announced the bands of marriage between Evan Skimutai Chalal and Precious Jebet Kilimo, who intend to wed on the 5th of August 2023, 10 a.m. at Sitam Karen. If anyone has a valid reason why these persons should not be lawfully wedded, kindly inform the church office in writing at least seven days before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. In case you need to communicate with us, please do so using any of the contacts.
much faster. Uh, this morning, the music ministry is happy um, and would like to invite you to join us as we reflect on the words of Acts chapter 4, four verse 12 that says there is no salvation in anyone else but Jesus. The word of God says salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. That is the word of God and that is what we want to share with you this morning. God bless you. Yeah. 
Let's appreciate our music, music ministry, music team. Amen. Thank you so much for reminding us that there is no salvation except in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. God bless you so much. Amen. Good morning. You are well? Amen. We thank God for bringing you. And uh, because of you, we have a wonderful service. We want to welcome our online uh, viewers, and I pray that you get blessed, even as we get blessed here on the ground. Amen. Thank you. I'm told there is an announcement for the Golden Edges. You normally have your meeting, your monthly meetings on the last Sunday of the month, which will be the 30th of July. So kindly, Golden Edges, you know where you normally meet, you know what you normally do. Please, make sure you meet there. You know, you know that room where you normally meet and go ahead and encourage yourselves, amen? So please mark that date. We will make the tea for you and then do mass, amen? Thank you. We know you are diet, amen? We don't want to, yes, we know you are diet. You don't need a lot of oil, fat. We will take care of you even when senior pastor is not here. Amen? Thank you so much. Our speaker this morning is none other than our very own Precious Call. <laughs> pastor Precious Call. Amen. We were so excited. And we really prayed for him, especially Pastor Amboi really prayed for him. Because he knows what it means to stand here, to preach and not to moderate. It is not easy. Pastor Call is married to Karen Call. Karen Simama, uh, we will not harass you today, that's enough, amen, amen, thank you so much. Allow me to pray, even as our pastor comes to minister. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and bless you because you are here. Thank you for gathering us in this place, and thank you because there is a word for us. Thank you because the speaker of the word is here, and so we commit our pastor call to you, even as he ministers your word this morning, that it shall land in our hearts and it shall do that which it is meant to do. We give you praise and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Karibu. Thank you. Amen. Asante. Please help me appreciate our de facto senior pastor. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Do you just want to turn to someone to your left and right and say jumbo to them? And just smile and let them know they are so privileged to sit next to you. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And I'm privileged to share God's word with us. And we will go straight to it. And today our text of focus is 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, let's just zoom in there to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I will be sharing a couple of thoughts that God has laid in my heart and um, if you're writing and you're looking for a sermon title, we can call it a living episode. Can we all say that? Let's preach to ourselves and say, I am a living episode. Amen. And if you're tweeting and want to share some nuggets, you can use the hashtag, the fifth gospel. The fifth gospel. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then there is the episode that is your life. All right. Yeah, all right. First, Second Corinthians chapter 3, I read from verse 1 from the New King James Version. The Bible says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need, as some others, episodes of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our episodes written in our hearts and known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an episode of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart, verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but that our sufficiency is from God. Do you want to just repeat that last line with me? That our sufficiency is from God. Let's all say that together. Let's make it personal and say, My sufficiency is from God. Go. 
And you can talk to your neighbor for the last time and tell them your sufficiency is from God. Amen. Over the last couple of Sundays, our senior pastor has led us through a theme as we examine, you know, um, salvation and souls coming to the Lord and, and the Great Commission and so on and so forth. And we've had amazing um, time listening from the speakers that have come before me. Um, and today, I just want to gather our thoughts on the possibility that God would use your life and my life as the outreach to other people. That through the conduct of our lives as believers and those of us that have come to faith, that God would use your life as the fifth gospel. Because we hear that your life is the Bible that some unbelievers will read. So do we sometimes pause and reflect and think about the Bible is calling us episodes. Another name for that is letters. Every letter carries a message. True or not true? Every letter carries a message and specific letters carry specific messages. When I was in high school, they taught us about a letter of application. If I wanted to get a job, I would write an application. And that letter had a specific format and the, the, the wording and structure was particular to that. I heard about letters of apology when we misbehaved in class, they asked us to write a letter of apology to the deputy. And you would confess your sin in there and ask for? You know, I also heard about a letter, a, a friendship letter, like the ones I used to write Karen when we were in KU, a friendship letter. Now, the, the structure and the content of all these letters is different. If you're writing an apology letter to the deputy principal, you don't ask for a favor in there. You don't get in between there and say, I also have had your recruiting school captains, and I here tender my application. Every letter carries a particular message. True or not true? If it's a, if it's a letter, if you're applying for a job, in, you know the structure. You know the language. There are some things you don't tell the HR. The letter is particular. The message is particular. And, and, and sometimes I wonder, now that our lives are episodes, what messages are we So it says that your lives are the episodes written by Christ, revealing the message of Christ. And so we are going to be seeing how some of our letters are letters of application mixed with some apology in there, and then there is some confession in there, and we just carry this all-rounded message. The letters we portray in church are different from the messages we portray at home. For some of us, the testimonies we have here is very different from the testimonies we'd hear from our house managers. They are not here. They are in other sit-down assemblies. <laughs> but to help us get there, let's first of all paint a picture and, and a context in which this is spoken by Paul. Paul is writing this, and the media team will be helping me. Just want to take us back to understand the, 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 the church that was in Corinth to which Paul wrote this letter, the city of Corinth. Everyone say with me, the city of Corinth. I am engaging you as I come down. <laughs> The city of Corinth, this is one of the cities that Paul reached to, evangelized, and, and did his missionary journeys, and he started a fellowship there. Now, Corinth of old was a very important city, in, in the, in the, particularly in the Greek, in the Greece mainland area. Paul, um, Corinth was, was a coastal city. It was located on a narrow east mass of land. I don't know if that's very clear, but, but by hand to believe every one of you can see a Corinth somewhere. Can you see Corinth? So Corinth lie on the lower landmass that, that was separated from the larger Greece by that narrow strip of land. It's called an isthmus. An isthmus is a narrow strip of land that links an island area and the mainland. So Corinth was a very strategic location. It was a coastal city, and, and it lay on the coast. It's still there presently, only that when you visit there, you will find more ruins and archaeological sites. So we are talking about a real place that was there and not Bible fictional stories. Are you with me? So that particular strategic location was very important for Corinth. Um, for those of you that have interest in history, you would know that in, one, in 146 BCE, um, a man by the name Emperor Lichinus, 
That should be the name. Ordered the complete destruction of Corinth, and they ransacked it. They killed everybody and destroyed the entire place. Um, a few years later, in 46 BCE, um, 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 Cyrus, Cyrus, Cyrus led the, the restoration of, of Corinth, and they built it again. And, but it still didn't go back to the glory that it was back in the day. But, but it was a coastal city, and that location was important, particularly for the trade that used to happen are in between the Gulf of Corinth and the Saronic Gulf on the lower end. So what would happen is ship that needed to move through from the Gulf of Corinth to the Saronic Gulf, they would avoid the larger area. If you could give us the third slide, I believe it, it would show it better. Uh, the, the third slide would show it better, media team. Uh, the, 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 the next one? No, go back to, to, the, to the first one. Yeah, yeah that, that's better. See, that there is the Corinthian Gulf in between there. There is Corinth, there is a Corinthian Gulf. I don't know if you can see it. And then down here we have the Saronic Gulf. So what would happen, this particular area down Corinth, the, towards the, the um, you know, where you can see Messenia and Laconia, that particular area of the sea was not very safe for navigation because it experienced very strong winds and storms. And so there would be a lot of shipwreck in that area. So captains would avoid moving that way when they wanted to come to Athens and Turkey and, and Asia. So what they would do is they would access Corinth through the Corinthian Gulf, and then they would dock their ship in Corinth. They would offload the, the goods from the ship, and then they would be loaded on smaller boats, which would move through the Corinthian Canal, and they would come down to the Saronic Gulf, and then they'll be loaded again to ship to proceed with their journeys the other way. So if you look at the other slides now, slide number three, we'll show you the Corinthian Canal. So that's where the ship would dock the other side, they would transfer the goods, and then they would be loaded on other ship in the Saronic Gulf to continue with the rest of the journey. So that kind of activity made Corinth full of life. You know, it's a coastal city and there's trade. I think Mombasa, for instance. Everybody, when you're thinking about a holiday destination, it's always to the south coast, north coast, Middle East coast, all those costs we go to. There's just something about life at the cost. It's, it's a luxurious life. It's easy. It's nice, you know. You go to the cost and all of you have your selfies out. You, you know, you are taking the photos of your feet soaked up in the sand. And, and there is that. So, so that brought a lot of wealth in Corinth. There was a lot of wealth. There was a lot of money. There was a lot of prosperity because of the trading that was happening in this city. So, so, so if you go on to the other slides, you'll be able to see, actually, this is a, a, a a present photo, a present time photo of the Corinthian Canal. If you go to Corinth now, you'll find it. So these are real places. Tell your neighbor it is real. And the, and the next slide is actually a photo. This one was taken, in fact, by a CNN journalist. I found it on their website. I didn't download them from heaven. They are just all over there. You'll find it there, and it can be able to help you. So, so there was wealth, there was riches, there was trading, and, 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 and you know what that brings about in the cost. Oh, you don't? Oh, you, you know? Ah, you're too spiritual on me this morning. <laughs> when there is affluence and there is pomp and there is that culture and there is prosperity, it also comes with some level of promiscuity. So if you go to Mombasa, you don't fail to recognize it. You pick it by the beach. Oh. Hey, these ones look very spiritual. Let's try here. <laughs> Any of you seen them around Mtuapa? I'm not asking if you've been there, but maybe you've heard on news. You've heard what happens in Mombasa, and Mombasa wanasema kuingia raha kutoka. That is Corinth of our day and time. So, so, so there was that, high-end living, um, and so on and so forth. What about their culture? Because of that, Corinth used to attract all manner of people from all over the place. So they had a lot of idol gods that they had borrowed from the Greek culture. So they had a lot of idol worship that was happening in their cities. It was so bad that they even built temples for, their, for, their, for, their, for the idol gods. There was what they called the temple of the Aphrodite gods. They, they had what they called the temple of Apollos. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the other slides that follow the Temple of Apollos, where they, they worshipped deities and people. This is not a real photo. It is, it is, it is, it's more like an, it's just an architectural idea of what it looked like. But if you go to Corinth now, you'll actually find pillars that are remains of some of those temples. 
these are real, real fortress of Corinth pillars. They had a temple that was called the temple of the Aphrodite God. This is that ruin. What you, the Aphrodite God was the God of beauty, pleasure, and sex. That temple had employed thousands, uh, a thousand prostitutes, and they were free, both men and women. For anybody, they used to practice what was called temple prostitution. Can you imagine a church that opens its door for sex? That was Corinth. It was that bad, and, and they were free. In fact, I, I, I read commentaries that, that, that even traces of homosexual affairs were in Corinth. In fact, as, as, as we'll be seeing, one of the issues that Paul had to address was a young man that was rumored to be having sexual relations with a stepmother. So that was Corinth, that was the culture, promiscuity, and, and, and there was a lot of that that was coming, of course, financed and supported by the, 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 the finances and, and the prosperity that came to that city as a result of its strategic location. So another thing that used to happen in Corinth is that they used to host what is called the Eastmas Games. Say after me, the Eastmas Games. The Isthmus Games were very prominent. In fact, historically, they are said to be only second after the Olympics, which had, had its origin in Athens. So what would happen, the Isthmus Games would happen after every two years. So people would come from all over the place. It was an athletic kind of competition. So people would come to compete. And then the, what, one of the things that is known for the Isthmus Games is that is the crowning. The, the crowning, the ones who would win, they would be given a crown of a wreath of flowers. This explains why in 1 Corinthians 9.24, Paul is telling them, do you not know that in a race all run? Anybody has read that scripture? He said, anybody who competes in the games, which games? The East Mass games. They, do, they beat their body into subjection. He says, they do so to receive a perishable crown. They understood that because the crown was a wreath of flowers that they would place on their head. Do you see there is context for everything in scripture? It wasn't something random that he was saying. He was using things that were happening in their city to teach them. Now, to this perverse community, to this immoral community, to this wicked group that we can say in our eyes, guess what? God sent Paul there. God sent Paul there. And I like that because there is no pit that is too dark for God to descend in there. I like that because there is, no, there is no sin bad enough for God to forgive. Is anybody hearing me today? There is no amount of chain that is too heavy for God to... God can reach you even in that den of alcoholism. He can still locate you there. God can reach our children, even those that have been lost in Koinange Street. His blood is still at work, and he goes even to those places. He didn't die for those that deserved him. He died for those that he loved. So even in Corinth, he sends help. Ah, you're too serious on me this morning. You're too serious on me this morning. So Paul begins his journey, and his journey is captured here. He begins his journey. He, he originally was Paul or Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus was a region in between Antioch and Dab, where there is that second Apokwaio on that harbor that has penetrated into land. That was, Tarsus was somewhere around there. That's where Paul received salvation. And he, he starts his, his growing in faith. And, and he sets on this journey, his second missionary journey, which historically is recorded to have taken place between 45 AD and 52 AD. So he begins his journey from Jerusalem. He goes to Antioch and he preaches there. He starts fellowships. He sets them on fire. He moves. He goes to Dab. He goes to Lystra. Now, all these things are not abracadabra stories. If you read Acts 15, 16, 17, and 18, you will find details of all those places he was going. Bible readers, go on as if you were CBR. Good. So if you read those three chapters, you will find details of all these journeys, and you can go like the people of Berea, which is one of the cities that he, you can go and cross-check everything I say on the live stream. Say, he lied to us here. 
So he goes to Dab, Lisa, Iconium, he goes to Antioch and he's preaching and he's evangelizing and he's moving across the cities, talking to people, telling them about the resurrected Jesus and telling them about salvation. He moves and goes to Trials and he preaches there and then he crosses over through sheep to Neapolis and then he comes to Philippi and there in Philippi he's preaching. He encounters a little, a lady that was called Lydia and the Bible says of her, she used to deal with the purple clothing. I don't know what that means. Maybe she used to sew. And there, Lydia, they get born again, and she starts housing the fellowship in her home. And, and, and while they were going around preaching, the Bible talks of a woman that was in this particular area of Philippi, and she had an unclean spirit that could say the right things. And then the Bible says she had honors that used to profit from her fortune-telling. So when she sees Paul and Silas, she begins to say, hey, yo, guys, these are prophets. They are telling you of how to be saved. She's saying the right thing, but she has an unclean spirit. The Bible says Paul got angry, and he turned to her and said, you evil spirit, I rebuke you now. Leave. And she was freed. And the Bible says the owners were not happy. We can also put the owners of those demons that have tormented our lives to notice today <laughs> that in the name of Jesus, leave. So what happens, they arrest Paul and Silas, they take them to the marketplace, and then they are prosecuted, and then they are sent in prison. This is where we get that song, Paulo Nasila, Paulo Nasila, say, Milango, oh, you know it, Ikafungu, let's stop there, that's where that happens, in Philippi. So Milango ya Gereza ilipomaliza kufunguka, I think in chapter 16, towards the end, they break out of prison and they go. And now Paul lives and he lives in the company of Silas and they move to Berea. They preach in Berea and they, they evangelize there and they, there's chaos. The Bible says that in some place they preached in the larger Thessalonica. They preached, the power of God was so evident that some Jews were not happy. So they went to the marketplaces and they looked for rowdy men. Everyone say rowdy men. And they brought them to cause havoc so there was unrest in the city. Maandamano ikanza mjini. What wakapigana nini? So Paul, the, the Bible says, they moved him at night. They sneaked him out at night. See, some people have paid the price for the gospel. Some people have paid a painful price for the gospel. Oh, that we may not play around with it. He left and came to Berea. He went all the way to Athens. He preached. He preached there. And then in 51 AD, 18 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, which happened in the 33 AD, Paul lands in Corinth. And he lands in this immoral and corrupt city. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 18 that he was housed. He met a man there that was a Jew. His name was Aquila. And Aquila, they had ran away from Italy because the, 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 the Roman leader there had declared that everyone who's not a Roman, leave, move, because we are coming for you. So Aquila left with his wife, and they came to Corinth, and they were living there in a small house as tent makers. So Paul gets there, he meets them, and they house him. And as they... Paul joins them in the tent-making business. Now, the tent-making business was important in Corinth because when they would host the Isthmus Games, they would attract a large number of people from all over the place. There was no accommodation for them, so they would need tents, and that's what Priscilla and Aquila were doing. Paul joined them, and as they made tents, he preached around, and he said, yo, come to Jesus. So he starts a fellowship. This fellowship in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, there about verse 11, you will see that it was housed in the house of a lady called Chloe. Did you hear baby Chloe being dedicated here? She hosted the servants of God in scripture. <laughs> so Chloe receives the Lord and she opens up her house to safari group. And she says, bring, let, let those that have come to faith come to my house. So Chloe begins to host the SG in Corinth, and they're excited about this newfound faith. And the guys are there, they are growing. And after one and a half years, 18 months, Paul leaves Corinth, and he goes to Ephesus. And in Ephesus, he preaches. While he's in Ephesus, he receives a letter. Two years later, after he left Corinth, he receives a letter. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 says he received a letter from some of the members of Chloe's household. They came and I said, Paul, we are having some problems. We are experiencing some challenges. Some believers have been born again, but they are divided between you 
Apollos and Peter, who came later. Some say they are yours, others say they are Apollos, others say they are Peter's. He said, number two, some of those that got born again are still struggling with immorality. They are still practicing temple prostitution. We need your help. Number three, we are having problems with food that is offered for idols. Some people are saying, is it bad to eat? Others are asking, what is wrong with it? They say, we don't understand. Should we eat pork? Should we not pork? <laughs> There's a crisis. And then I say, number four, we are having chaotic worship. During our worship experiences, someone just stands in the congregation and he starts speaking in tongues. And they start prophesying on that corner, someone else on that corner with a word of knowledge. He says, we need some order. Then he says, number five, we are also experiencing challenges. Some people are having issues during the Holy Communion. We don't have order. Some come hungry. They finish the elements. <laughs> they, before the emblems pass Zimeisha, because someone scooped the bread. <laughs> and you know, in their day and time, they, it used to be real food, Pastor Wendo. It used to be real food. Watch him catch it to me, Pimiwa. He may cut to him. No, it used to be real food. So they are saying, we are having issues. We don't know how to help us. And then they said, number six, there are also people that are questioning the legitimacy and validity of the resurrection. Can you speak into that? So what does Paul do? In response, he writes a letter. Historically, it's called Corinthians A. In our day and time, it's called 1 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians is a response to the issues that the SG members of Chloe's household have risen. So how does he begin? He starts 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 1, he says to them, at this time, you're supposed to be mature, craving for spiritual food, but you still want milk. What is wrong with you? How can you be divided on Paul and Apollos? I, I sowed the seed, Apollos watered, but it is God who causes the increase. What is wrong with you, sit on valley roads? You picky, picky, ponky pastors. It doesn't matter who preaches. It is God that causes the increase. Yeah. So I see there are some Corinthians here. We are Corinthians on Valley Road. You see? So they are saying, as we are this way, as we are of Pastor Mugambi, no, no, as we are of Senior Ruth, ah, no, as we like the new kid in the block. <laughs> it is God who causes the increase. So he begins to address those things. Then he writes to them about the immorality. And he, when you read Corinthians, is there 3, 4 there? 1 Corinthians 3, 4. You see him turning, telling them, flee, you know. Then he go, he's addressing all those issues. He addresses the food issue. He addresses the Holy Communion. And he says, the scripture that we read here every day, 1 Corinthians 11. Now you know the context. Brothers and sisters. And then he says, I will give you further instructions when I come. And then he moves on, he tells them other things. And finally, in chapter 16 of 1 Corinthians, he ends and says, final greetings. And then he sends Titus to bring that letter back to Corinth. So Titus brings that letter in Corinth. And, 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 and the contents, what I want us to see is, and this is where we land. Anybody who was still hanging in the air? <laughs> wondering where are we going with this? This is where we land. The believers in Corinth are going through a challenge in their walk with God. They have received Christ. They have been converted. They have been born again. But their walk with God is not without challenges. I thought I'd hear an amen because maybe a few of us would identify that the Christian journey for some of us has not been very Christian. They are not here. Maybe they are this way. Do, do I have a few fans here that say, you, Pastor, you don't have to lift up your hand. But, but I don't know if there are some of us we got born again back in the day with so much fire, but over time we've gone through some challenges. There are areas in our Christian walk where we have struggled. That God, and you see, this is the challenge of the Christian faith. God saves you from a sinful world, then he doesn't take you in heaven with him. He brings you right back to that sinful world with a call to be salt and light and an epistle. It cannot be easy. That he saved us out of things and he still left us there. Now to shine his light, it will not be without challenges. So I would like to encourage one or two people, myself included, that know for sure the journey of faith for me has not been without struggle. I want you to know you are in good company. 
I want you to know that your brothers and sisters existed in 51 AD in Corinth. You are in very good company. Just if you're here and you feel and you know for sure, there are still issues. That's you all too holy on me this morning. If you're here and your journey of faith has been plagued with challenges, you're in good company. There is help for us. I said there is help for us. So the people of Corinth are leaving and there is a problem ab about the culture around them. The culture around them is influencing their journey of faith with God. They have been saved from things that they are still in love with. Huh? They have been saved, their chains have been broken, but they still like the sound of the chains. So they like to keep the chains around and, and play around with them a little bit. They, 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 they have been freed from their oppression, but, but they still want to keep the oppression not so far away from them. There are things about where God has taken them that are still appealing to them. Isn't that the picture of us today? There are many of us that God has saved us from things that we still want to cut from a safe distance. So if you are a young person, if you go to the youth church and you ask for an open and question, open and answer question, oh? If you ask people to do a, a question and answer, one of the questions you see they'll hear us is, how far is too far? How far can I be saved but still be close to what I've been saved from? Because God has saved us from things we still want to... I, I still have memories of, of that prostitute in the temple. So when the fellowship, when the Bible study is over, some sneak out and they go back to the Aphrodite temple. When nobody is seeing, of course they are not here, they are in other sit assemblies. God has saved us from things, but at the deep of the night, some of us, we sneak out and go back and consult some of those things. Let the sleeping dogs lie. So there the believers in Corinth are existing, and the problem is that instead of them adjusting their culture to suit the standards of God's word, they are adjusting God's word to suit their culture. So in Matthew chapter 7, is it verse 11, Jesus gives a parable of the sower. The second category of that parable, he said, some seeds fell on good ground, but they, there were thorns and thistles around it. So they grew, but eventually the thorns, they choked the life of God's word. Now that is Corinth. The seeds have landed on hearts. They have heard the gospel, they've been transformed, but there's something else around them that is choking the growth of that word. God has saved them from cultures that they are still entertaining in our day and time. Isn't that our norm here? Many in the church today, there is an, up, there is an upsurge in men and women turning back to traditions. They are there. The Corinthians are here. They're in Mount Kenya. Huh? I hear they say, Aduri thai. They are there in my community in Western Kenya, where I come from, where cultures have sat on men. E that you must do this when you lose a husband and you're a woman. There are cultures that are toxic, demonic, about where you should sleep, how you should sleep, what you should do. Hatuwezi mzika akiangalia hivi, lazima angalia hivi. Culture, waze wakanisa. Isn't it happening? Culture is here, right here. So it's one thing to look at Corinth and wonder what was wrong with them. They are here. You are some of them. Some of them. God has blessed you. You started a company. He's blessed your finances. And all of a sudden, the others come and say, now you have to sacrifice some gods so that the gods can protect you. Let me ask you, where were those gods when you were struggling to build that company? Where were those gods when you are borrowing and asking for mortgage? Where were they when your children were being sent home for school fees? Where were they when you are struggling with loans? Where were they when you are fasting and praying in Cataloni, in Heaven's Gate, trusting God for breakthrough? Where were they in your struggle? Now they show up in your success and they ask you to give, to shed some blood. Listen, there is no blood that can be shed other than the blood... Media team, please give me some volumes on the monitor. 
other than the blood that is of the Son, Jesus Christ. There is no other blood that needs to be shed. There is no other goat that can save you. There is no amount of ram or sheep or cattle that can save you. The blood of Jesus is enough for you. Do I have a witness this morning? I said the blood of Jesus is enough for you. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Someone has been married for two years, three years. They've not been able to conceive. Now they call you for a gathering at home. And they say, we need to cleanse something from your lineage. So we need you to go and look for a gray goat. And look for a brown chicken. The devil is a fat liar. The, I said the devil is a liar. Listen, I know from scripture, the God of Sarah, who said to Abraham, next year, a time like this in this house, there's going to be the cry of a baby. I know, I know in scripture, in Genesis 25, when Rebekah could not have children. Oh, I know of Isaac that prayed for the womb of Rebekah. And the Bible said, God released seed. Oh, I know the God of Hannah of old, that she knelt in the temple calling on the name of God and there was the God of Sarah is still here today the God of Rebecca is still here today the God of Hannah is still here today so I'm here to speak into all those cultures and say that God is still active and alive even in the now God can still bless you with children you don't have to sacrifice innocent gods that we would have roasted and eaten you don't have to waste 8,000 shillings going to Thika to look for a goat. Buy us that goat when we come to pray in your house. We will roast it there, lay hands on your womb, and for sure there's going to be a miracle of conception. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Listen, I am not saying culture is bad. No. I am not even Jesus was born in a culture. He was circumcised on the eighth day in accordance to culture. They took him to the temple for dedication in accordance to we are all born in cultures. There's nothing wrong with culture, but we must place limits when our cultures come to a conflict with our faith. Somebody has got to stand their ground and say, where I have been saved from, I'm not going back. Ah, you guys are not getting it. Or oh, you still want to keep it close? You still want to keep it close? Keep it close. If you want, if you still want to court your culture, court it. We subscribe to the culture that is the God of word, the word of God, which places limits on us today. So they've been saved from a culture, but that culture is still choking the life out of them. They are here this morning. There are some of us that we had a fervent Christian life as we began our journey of faith, but something about our cultures has drawn us away. And it's not just tradition, they are the present day realities, the new creation realities. Cultures and arguments of men, philosophies of men that are forcing us to accept abnormalities as normal. The devil is a fat liar. We are not going to be cowed. We have God's word as the blueprint that informs everything. So we will not be, allowed, we will not be coerced into accepting things that are off the standards of God's word. It doesn't matter. We will not bend the standards of God to accommodate even the thoughts of the new generation. So when the Bible says marriage is heterosexual and homo homologous, monogamous. <laughs> homologous was something in chemistry. <laughs> but when we say that marriage is heterosexual, it's between woman and man. A grown-up woman and man. Everything else that falls off that standard, we will not accept it. When we say that in the Bible marriage is monogamous, it doesn't matter. That is the standards of God's word. It will never bend to accommodate our weakness. But thankfully, the grace of God is able to reach your weakness and bring you to the standard of God's word. Buana sifiwe. Buana yesu asifiwe. Buana asifiwe. So we will not even become, even the new entertainment trends of our day and time, they will not shape us into what we are not. So we even pray for our children that the cultures of their day and time will not deter and remove them away from God. So now, when Paul sends that letter as a response to their cultural problems, which are also here today, a few years later, he receives 
what is some other disturbing reports. And they said to him that when you left, some false teachers emerged. Some false teachers emerged. Now, they emerged with eloquence. They emerged with diction. They have good English. They have persuasive arguments. They dress sharp. You know, the, you know in scripture, I, I, I read that. I, see, I hear commentators were saying, Paul was not a very appealing guy. He wasn't appealing. He was just a simple prophet. He just had his robe and preach around. Him, he didn't care as to do manicure. The man of God has to comb his hair. Mm -mm. He was just plain. Vumbi kwa migu, just plain, but thundering the gospel. So some prophets have emerged and they, 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 they have some swag. And then they have showed up in Corinth and they are pomp and they have, they even have a, a, a distinct walking appearance. And they're saying, oh, is Paul really an apostle? He doesn't look like one. Look at his demeanor. Look at the way he carries himself. Is he really an apostle? And believe you me, the believers in Corinth began doubting. So Paul received reports. Second Corinthians is otherwise described as the painful letter. And his third visit to Corinth was, is, is described historically as the painful visit. Why? Because he's going back to the people that have been influenced to doubt his authenticity. So because of this surge of false prophets, what they did is that now the churches and fellowships started demanding for letters of commendation. That for you to come, you must come with a letter of commendation from places you've ministered before so that we can know you. And they asked Paul for a letter of commendation. So he wrote the scripture we've read, the context is, he's asking them, do we really need to go there? Your life is the commendation. So false prophets have reason. Aren't there in Siwako in our day and time? Haven't you seen them? Some of us have been swept because of the new prophets that have showed up in town with slim suits from Italy and sharpshooters that, are, that have been made with crocodile Crocodile skin. When they show up in town, we Valley Road loses half the members because there's a new prophet in town. One who is more appealing, he's more charming, he doesn't have mother tongue interference like some of our pastors. So we run there. We know how you judge us. We know. We see what you write on social media about us. We know you, we can see it from, we know, we know what you feel when Pastor so-and-so is preaching, we know. So because there's a new prophet in town who's speaking the King James English, the power of God is upon me. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Listen, listen, never. It's possible to have the language. It's possible to have the diction. It's possible to have the words. But it's possible to not have the fire. It's possible to miss the most important ingredient of a minister's life, the power of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter even if your preacher preaches and you do not know when they say talk and talk, which one is talk and which one is talk. <laughs> and they say, I am saying talk with a T and not talk with a T. Before we realize they are saying, dog, we have been lost. It doesn't matter, but as long as you can hear them, please stay. For as long as you can hear them, please stay. It doesn't matter whether that pastor has mother tongue interference, but for as long as when he lays his hands on your child and begins to prophesy, you can hear him. Even if he says, Father, we pray for this child. Bless him. Atakama akona shida matamchi ya ala na elo. Sit under the anointing if it's there. <laughs> Sit under that anointing. After all, who told you you have the monopoly of good English? What if we get to heaven and realize the people of Mount Kenya have been pronouncing it right? <laughs> what if we get to heaven and, and realize that We might get to heaven and realize it's actually called a parallelogram and not parallelogram. So please, stop it. Stop it. The new age of preachers that are coming in our generation and day. And, and, this, and this disease has come. And, and in our day and time, I see it. And, and there is some West African chaos that has landed in Kenya. 
there's something about West Africa. Not, I don't have any problems with West Africa, but those people are authentically on fire for God. Some of us copy the wrong things. We listen to their theology, we listen to their doctrine, we listen. So you find someone that comes from Kiandutu. <laughs> now, they even change their name, so you hear my name is Fever Kamau. Fever Kamau and you have been Nebuchadnezzar the whole time. <laughs> my name is Blessed Victor Wanyuni. <laughs> so we, we, we prophetize our names. We force ourselves into... Then they are all over town, they are all over town, and they are sweeping a lot of us because they have an appearance. They have a command. They are commanding some of you to hell. And the worst part of it, you see, in their day and time, they began to poke authenticity on the ministry of Paul. Haven't we seen them? Little boys that have gone to, they have gone to a, a, a two weeks training on hermeneutics. Now they feel like they can lecture and call every other preacher. The men and women that have labored for the salvation we enjoy today. Two weeks of hermeneutics has filled your head. Now you feel like you're the eat, you're the Paul of your day. Listen, sit down and eat. The journey of you is long. I am calling out all those new generation of preachers, my kind, who go to a theological school and then after one month, we feel like we are the ones who have it. We are calling out everyone on social media. We are insulting them. We are calling them lunatics. Listen, sit down and eat. The journey ahead of you is too long. Haven't you read about Billy Graham and his friend? They were preaching fire in their 20s. In fact, his friend, I'll get his name because I read about him last night. What was the name of this gentleman? I, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. They used to preach together. And, the, and, and, and historically, they say in their 20s, that was in 1940, the whole world had known Billy Graham's friend will be the one that will turning and moving crowds. He went to theological school and he left the faith. He died in 2001 at the age of 86. The last book he wrote, guess the title? A Farewell to God. Be careful when your theology fills your mind more than it fills your heart. Don't allow yourself to be puffed up with new creation realities and prophets of our day that are nothing but scum. Then you come here and you begin to call out men and women. Listen, it does not matter the misgivings of the men and the heroes of faith in our republic. The fact remains that some of them labored for the gospel here in Kenya. Some of them, they labored for that which, you see, some of us have been born and third generation Christian. We don't understand what it means to break generational curses. We don't understand what it means to be the only one born again in a family that practices witchcraft. We don't understand the pain that some of those men went through. We don't understand that some of them died. But we've shown up and we feel like we know it, so so and so, false preach. Listen, go away. <laughs> Disappear. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Let me tell you, I have memories in my mind when I was growing up as a little boy in Eldoret. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they would announce in church and say, we are meeting at 64 Stadium in west of Eldoret because Pastor Pius Moiro is coming. My goodness. We would close churches to go to the stadium. He would storm on that pulpit with Lango, 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 and we would sing. I have memories of Saturday, 7 p.m. after the news on KBC radio when we would hear the voice, now. He would preach the gospel in simplicity. And then he would say, Kiwa unaumwa na mwili, weka mkono wako kwenye unaumwa, na uwa mkono mwingine guza radio. And we would touch the radio, and we would be healed. It doesn't matter how much you feel the people have fallen from grace. The truth is God used them. And it is not in your place to judge. It is not in your place to call them out. Forget about that lie that we are Bereans. Bereans for who? Bereans with two sentences of scripture. Bereans with two weeks of hermeneutics. Disappear. And go and pray in humility. Because even those men that you sit and say they have fallen, once upon a time, they started right. Or you think they woke up and say, so now from today, I want to start to be a prosperity preacher. Mm -mm. You see their fallenness, but you don't see your pride. New generation preachers, 
disappear. It doesn't matter. Anybody remembers those days of the evangelist Resia Wairimo when she would storm Uhuru Park for crusades? It doesn't matter what you think about them now. The fact remains. The fact remains. What we have today, they labored for. It does not matter your misgivings on even Bishop Makariuki. Anybody remember those springtime magazines? You read them. I, I was a little boy, I read them. My parents, when they were dating, used to serve as ushers in some of those crusades. In fact, in my parents, when Reinhard Bonke came to Eldoret in Huruma grounds when he was preaching, my parents were there dating, about to get married. And they received a word from God in that meeting that you'll get a firstborn son and he shall be a son with a precious calling. Hence my name. It doesn't matter. For me, it means something. It means something. So careful when your theology feeds your head and you start running around from time, from town to town. Young people that are flocking out of Valley Road and they're saying the church is not youth friendly. What do you mean the church is not youth friendly? Who has seen a youth friendly organization that they work in? You say the church is not. What we are simply looking for is a place that can accommodate our culture. So, so we, we lose them and they go to those youth-friendly congregations. But when they get married and they get children, they come back to Valley Road because we have good Sunday school. And they know, even for me, I don't want my child to grow here because they know it. Youth-friendly congregations, youth-friendly. What is, what is youth-friendly? The old rugged cross will always remain old. It will remain so old. Hundred years later, it will be so old. We will die and leave it old. It will not new and nice to accommodate us. It will remain old. Nong everybody. I say the old rugged cross will remain. So, we finish it at this. In response to all those things, Paul says, if you're looking for the evidence, your own life is the episode. Your own life is the evidence. Your own life is the evidence of my apostleship. He says, your life is a letter. What are the contents of that letter? Parents that are here, what are the contents of the letter of your life? What message are your children getting when they read the letter that is your life? Last year in the church that I formerly was preaching, we had a teens, a teens hangout on a Saturday, and I went there, and we were speaking about family. I asked the young people to close their eyes, and I asked them, how many of you, given a chance, you would choose different parents and a different family? Three quarters of them had their hands up. On Sunday, I was preaching in church. I told their parents, yesterday I was with your children. Three quarters of them said, given a chance, they would choose different parents. What have they seen? I have not asked the ones in Valley Road, but I will ask them next Sunday because I'll be with them. And then I'll bring you the report. Haven't some of you parents, the content of your letter is yuck, but you leave it open for your children to see. Fathers that go to pick their children in school and in your journey home, you're speaking to your mpangwa on phone, arranging how you will meet when you drop the kids and you think, ah, they don't get it. They get it. They pick it. They see it. I hear parents say, this is a lost generation. The kids of nowadays are not like us. Have you considered how much of your actions has made them lost? Is there a possibility? Mothers that are here, here in church, the message, the episode of your letter is. Ah, She's an excellent WM leader, small group leader. It's excellent WM small group leader. Lakini pale nyumbani. Tag of war. 
nitakuweka kanisani as we know a leader what are the contents of your letter when we ask your neighbors young people some of us we are known in those apartments we live for the number of women we bring in every week you always seen with a new one but here in church you have I and judges have you even have the look of Christ but the letter no wonder some of you would never want us to know where you live <laughs> what is the content of your letter at your place of work no wonder some of you would never invite pastors to your companies to come and say a prayer when you have a feeling you are going to meet a pastor on this street because you know the content of your episode is wanting what are your children reading have you considered the message that is your life are you thinking about what i'm saying i'm preaching to myself as much as i'm preaching to you the message of your episode mothers that are here if we called your house managers and asked them what they think about you what would be the response the youth of nowadays are lost but the ones that have lost us are here i went to preach last last time last time i was hosting i was hosting a small i'm finishing with this in 2 minutes i'll be out i was hosting a small one of the international schools here around had invited me to do a small bible study with the students it was a girl school so i went there and i was there almost every week on saturday at 4 pm and we just used to sit with these girls there are not many in this, some of these schools the christian community is a minority we were just like six to us, six of us on a good day would be 10 we were talking on my fourth visit one of the girls wrote me a letter a six page letter i have it here i see it's not a love letter just in case you're thinking <laughs> but she wrote this letter and i just want to read a, a paragraph for you is she was opening up to me about her struggles at home at some point i went through my mother's phone and found some cringe messages with baba someone with all due respect i was really wondering why my mom was distant from me but now i can get it i was young at that time and i didn't understand he says i told i told my dad's sister secretly so that my mom would not know but so that she can help them get together she told my dad and my dad became hostile to us he started drinking he went to rehab things got worse they separated eventually it ended up with the death of his father of this girl's father she writes painful things about what she feels of herself because of that this is your child what letter are they reading the letter is here it is six pages six pages of a girl that is emotionally wrecked she doesn't have an identity and she said i only wrote had the confidence of writing this to you because for the first time in a long while i felt like someone cared heavenly father we thank you and we repent for the many instances where the letters of our lives have not been pleasing to you and we pray for grace in our time of need that you will help every one of us in the bits that we are struggling are you here this morning and your the episode of your letter is wanting and you're saying i just want you to pray for me to receive jesus shoot up your hand i'll see it just want to receive jesus so that he can inscribe this episode in your life are you there anybody that wants to receive christ this morning great i see we don't have any oh there's there's oh there are some people amen let's pray together with them let's all of us pray and say lord jesus thank you for dying on the cross for me I invite you to my heart to inscribe your message on my heart. Help me live a life that will please you. 
In Jesus' name. From this moment, I'm born again. I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me invite our deputy senior pastor to come and conclude. God bless you. Amen. Let's keep appreciating her until she's here. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Pastor Cole. <laughs> hey. All right. Pastor Cole, Pastor Paul. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Hey, 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 hey. Leo ni Leo. <clears throat> Don't court or date with the things that God has saved us from. May we not allow the seed of the word that has landed in our hearts be choked by worldliness. The blood of Jesus is enough to sort us out from the past, from our past generation to the future. God is still active in the now. We won't bend the standards of God to accommodate any wickedness. Not in our lives, not in our homes, not in our businesses, not in the church. The power of God is enough to make us, to make all the difference in our lives. And the content of our epistle is very key. Think about that. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for blessing us. I believe you cannot hear this and remain the same, isn't it? And if you are here and you sincerely want to give your life to Jesus Christ, our pastors will be right here, our elders will be here. Please feel free to come to the altar and give your life to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord. I believe the Lord will help you live right. Amen. That our children, that our people, that people who interact with us will be able to read um, the epistle that God expects from us as children of God. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, for our new, our, our first time visitors, kindly feel free to walk to any of our welcomers. They are dressed in blue coats and they have a tag on them, welcome ministry. Kindly walk to any of them and they will lead you to our visitor's room immediately. Amen. And uh, in case you have any need, any prayer that you'd like us to pray for, also feel free to come to the altar and we will pray for you. Amen. Just a small correction. The Golden Edges meeting will not be on the 30th, but it will be on the 23rd. It normally happens on the fourth Sunday of the month. This, this month has five Sundays. So it will be on the fourth Sunday of the month, which is next week on Sunday from 2 p.m. And they'll be talking about nutrition. There'll be a very good speaker to speak to them. Amen. So if you're a golden age, please note it is next week on 23rd of July. Let me pray even as we come to a close of this. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you for speaking to us so, so, so expressly, oh God, about how we should conduct ourselves as children of the light. And so, Father, we pray that you forgive us for times that we have not conducted ourselves well. Each and every one of us is guilty. Lord, we pray that you forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and make us clean before you, oh dear God. We thank you for our speaker of the day, Pastor Cole. Thank you for allowing him to just open up and pour that word of God to us, oh Father, and we speak a blessing and more anointing even as he prepares for the next service. We pray that even as we leave to go to our homes, that your presence will go with us and will keep us from falling. We give you praise and we bless you, for this is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good week. Thank you.
Christ.